Social Services Committee meeting to order. And first on the agenda is I need a motion to approve the minutes of last month's meeting. Okay. Supervisor McDevitt, seconded by Supervisor. <laughs> Any additions or corrections? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I will abstain. You will abstain. Okay. Noted. Thank you. Okay, with that, Dee, <coughs> all up to you. Good morning. Good morning. The first item on our agenda is permission to create a temporary aging services assistant position, grade four, to help us with our HEAP applications and open enrollment basically from October to March of each year um, with a maximum number of hours set at 1040 a year, currently $14.10 an hour, $15,000 annually, um, depending on the salary set by the CSE agreement. And this is going to be using our district funding, the delivery system reform incentive payment, which is 100% reimbursable. Um, typically from October until March, we are extremely busy because it's our open enrollment for HEAP, HICAP, which is our health insurance, um, and basically anything else that's going on, getting people ready for the winter. All right, so I'd like to make that motion. Supervisor Loeb, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Any discussion? Yes, Ms. Bramer. Um, it's great that it's 100% reimbursable. Is that taken away from any other positions or work that we're doing? No. During that time, it, it'll be an additional funding? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Supervisor Loeb. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we do this every year, correct? This is the first year we're going to be doing this. I know. Well, we do the HEAP and the high cap open enrollment every single year. Um, last year was extremely busy because we had a health insurance plan that moved out of the area, so they were um, swamped the whole year. So, no. follow up with that. I know in the, in every year we do it, and then we struggle with it. We're struggling to get the funding, we're struggling to get the, the application process. Is this because we pulled back on some hours and now we just find we need to do it part time? We you, you can't predict what's going to happen in the coming year. Correct. Um, but I know last year the Department of Social Services was having a hard time keeping up with the application. So if we can get them processed, what, the part that we do sooner, it will help them get it um, approved for the clients faster. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, uh, supervisor. How many, um, approximately, uh, how many people are on the HEAP program? <coughs> any, any number? It is not the exact. I know last year we did, for the HEAP season, I think it was almost 800 applications we helped with. That was just through OFA. Yeah, that, those were only just ours. That's just through OFA? Yes. 800? Yes. And you're looking at at least half an hour to an hour per application. Plus there are other uh, uh, assistance programs out there. I know we have one through the Fulton Chamber. It's a assistance program. And, uh, there are other programs out there as well. Like, um, pretty significant. Numbers. Yes. Yes, Mr. Driscoll. Just a, a, a easy, uh, easy clarification. <laughs> the average uh, uh, SNAP uh, numbers, I think, are about 3,600, 3,700 uh, households um, uh, per month. And uh, generally, heat is uh, more than that. So I would guess that it exceeds uh, uh, 4,000 uh, households who are receiving that benefit. Uh, yeah, that usually kicks it for national grid customers that will kick in generally with their January bill, sometimes <coughs> uh, in time for their December bill. Um, but depending on the, the size of the, uh, the unit, uh, especially uh, seniors in, in uh, like a Cronin position in Glens Falls, uh, uh, if they uh, apply in, in November when the season opens, uh, they may be getting their benefits into uh, March or April. And it, it, the, the grant is more depending on a type of, of fuel, so uh, uh, oil, wood, kerosene, uh, uh, chips, those types of things uh, could be up with maybe $750 plus, uh, whereas uh, electricity will be probably uh, in the 400s during the season. Thank you, Mr. Driscoll. Sure. Any other questions? All right, then. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And the next item is just permission to fill that aging services assistant temp position. Someone like to make that motion, Supervisor McGowan, seconded by <laughs> Supervisor Driscoll. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Carried. Thank you. And the last item I have is just to let you um, know that we'll be having our annual senior picnic on Wednesday, September 11th at the Fish Hatchery up in Warrensburg. Um, it's $5 a person and we have food to serve, entertainment. We also do blood pressure clinics for um, the seniors, informational booths, games, prizes. Um, we typically do the flu shot, but unfortunately it won't be available yet this year. Okay, very good, thank you. Any committee member have any questions? Supervisor Bramer. Are we having an update on countryside? Yes, she's here today. Okay. Well, she, saw, she's under social services. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, she's here. <laughs> All right. Anything else? <laughs> I guess we're in good shape then. Thank, Thank you, Dee. Have a nice day. You're not on the board, man. Um, Chris, do you have a problem if we do countryside first? We're waiting for um, Mr. Moore to be here for the veterans, so could we do, is that right to do countryside and then we'll get to you after we get to veterans. Thank you, Chris. Nice to have you here with us today. We have a needed bunch, so it's good that we haven't needed to ask for anything until now. Well, so, um, and we don't have a lot. Um, I'd like for the first action item to the intent to fill the senior aid number two. Um, it's a grade seven annual salary of $33.50. Um, it's due to a promotion, and I'm not looking to do it until November 1st. The reason I don't want to do it until November 1st is because we have a temporary uh, in there right now that's training. And I feel like the person she's training right now needs to be um, completely 100% to train the next person. So I feel that number, November 1st will be a good timeline. Okay, that makes sense. I would like to make that motion. Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor Leggett. Any questions? Mr. Leggett. Thank you, Ms. Cameron. The, the training is for to backfill then that position, or? I guess I... Yeah, am I bad I'm sorry, I'm a little confused for that. The position was approved to train the staff that was just hired. So I think that approval will end in November and she'll be ready to go completely trained. So then when we hire a new staff person, she'll be able to train the new staff person. She has so two senior aid positions right. that were empty. She filled one, she got a temporary to train the first one. So once the first one is fully trained, she wants to hire the second position because the first one can then train the okay. second one. Train the trainer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of confusing. She okay. get two senior aid positions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, the second action item is to uh, correct resolution number 53 of 2019 that inadvertently left out the prevailing wages for Mahoney alarm. Um, the rationale is the alarm system has to be working in its optimum and, and is mandated by the Department of Health. Um, the money is appropriated in the budget. All right. Supervisor Driscoll makes the motion, second by Supervisor Lope. Any discussion? Supervisor Bramer. You did have budgeted for the prevailing rate that you did go into the resolution language. Right. Okay. Yes. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 
Um, my last item is to um, amend Resolution 451 of 2018 to temporarily increase the hours um, to cover cleaning duty of an employee that's out on a leave of absence. I'd come like to make that motion, Supervisor Loeb, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Any discussion? Supervisor Bramer. Could you just tell us what that resolution was? Why are we doing um, I understand the current covering, but yeah. what did the board of you want to say? Um, that was a 24-hour max um, for a kitchen service helper. The job duties are relatively the same. We can't exceed that 24 hours unless we amend it temporarily. Okay. How long is that she paid? Not paid, that she's all going to ask. How long is the temporary okay. period going to last? Um, right now, there's a tentative for the mid-October yeah. to come back. Okay. So this what resolution time? will say that, that we're only exceeding the 24 hours until that period of time? Well, I didn't oh. put a, a end date in it because, as okay. we all know, Yes. Sometimes I'll things exceed what we plan I'll on, um, so it, there isn't an ending. It's just going to be a temporary. But what are we increasing the hours to? 40. 40, okay. All right, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The census, it has, you know, we've saved um, relatively right, you know, between the 32 and 35. Um, we do have a lot of referrals that come in, you know, weekly. We're touring, and um, sometimes we, we just can't meet. <coughs> them, but I'm, I feel confident that the numbers are going to get a little bit better, but I also feel good with the retention that we have. Okay, good. And then over time, over time seems to be coming down each time. Um, having more positions filled. Um, we have some great new per diem people that um, are able to cover more. All right. Anyone have any questions on either of those two things? Comment. Uh, thank you for those reports. Yeah, it's real helpful sitting here to see where things are going. No, that's true. We appreciate that. Any questions from anyone else on the committee? Supervisor Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just have clarification on the, on the calculation of the overtime. Uh, these are hours? Yes. Uh, we just looked at, say, March 17th. <coughs> eight, eight hours in 2018, <coughs> 12, 10 hours, 10.8 hours, 19. Now, is that the total time that someone works overtime, or is that? Well, I guess I just answered my own question. Never mind. Thank you. Sorry. I was thinking of the dollars. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're in good shape. All right. Anyone in the audience have a question? All right. Ms. Bramer. Thank you. Is there anything else um, that you should know about, or anything that's on the horizon that we are thinking about and can? Where are we with laundry? I don't remember where we ever landed with that. We are doing our own, weren't we? Doing our own and then are going it's, out. It's working. We have um, two cleaners that um, pitch in. Some of the other staff, like the 11-7 staff, they'll throw a load in in the morning before they leave. Um, I'm thinking in 2020 um, it would be great if maybe we, we could actually look at having a part-time um, laundry person. We can make it work in the budget. But right now we, we are able to do everything in-house without causing overtime. The residents need to do that. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Doing a good job up there. Okay, we're, Great day. We're deep <laughs> We're ready now for you, dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. You're welcome. You want them too? I don't want to find them. I know. I just don't want to do one for you. I work for myself for two years. Yeah. I'm very interested. I've got my own reputation. Do you have a favor? One is yours. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
with regards to this program is being able to uh, get the word out about the program. So we are, uh, right now, I, I, I guess I've already created the resolutions, however, we have no contract. But the only uh, game in town, we'll say, the company is Lamar. We would like to purchase three bulletin boards. One in Warren County, two in Washington County. And the reason why we did one and two is due to the price. Warren County's billboards are a little more money than they are in Washington County. So just try to keep the even playing field between the two counties. You went with one bulletin board in Warren County and two in Washington County. I believe you have uh, information regarding those bulletin boards in their location. Okay. Someone like Madam to make Chair, that motion? Just correct me, you mean billboards along the yeah, road? I do mean billboards along the road. Actually, someone like to make that motion? Supervisor Loeb, second by Supervisor, Supervisor Driscoll. Mr. Driscoll, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. Go Thank ahead. you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Denise, yes. um, in addition to the, uh, the three billboards, possibly for um, for next year, you, you may want to um, look at a couple of other um, electronic uh, billboards, mm -hmm. uh, one outside the pool and churning arena, as well as uh, oh. one um, at East Field. Uh, especially the East Field one would, would uh, uh, catch a lot of uh, Washington County residents. Uh, and it's just amazing how many uh, vehicles uh, pass by the pool and churning arena. Just something to, yes, to think about. Yes, I mean, I didn't even think about electronic bulletin boards, but I'm well aware of the ones you're speaking of. Right now, we're just asking for a six-month period to see okay. how it goes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether or not we would do it after that six months, but we would come back to committee to ask for that approval. And at the pool and churning arena, I mean, certainly uh, the, the county uh, has made a, uh, a big investment in, in that facility and uh, I think you would probably find the, uh, the rates. Uh, you know, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Right, Mr. McGowan, I saw your hand. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a billboard advertising. I mean, I just, uh, I just don't see it as what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So many other means of, um, of uh, you know, advertising out there, and especially going on Facebook and stuff like that. I mean, there's, you know, I have to say every now and then I do find a good gadget that uh, I kind of like that comes across on Facebook. And I'm like, you know, that's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that or something? Right. You know, but um, not that I'm questioning. I, I think it's a, a great idea. And uh, but if we looked into other means of, you know, the pushing this out there that you know wouldn't cost where we could take advantage of some of these um, cookies, let's say, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to go off the, uh, the um, setup here for just a second. I need to skip down to the discussion item of peer-to-peer, -peer, the annual budget that goes from July 1st to June 30th. Supervisor McGowan, I need you to know that we received $185,000 for this peer-to-peer -peer program. It's a use it or lose it. Okay. We are never going to, I mean, we're going to try and put a dent in it, but come June 30th of next year, we're probably not going to be down as low as we probably should be for the grant because we're going to get an additional $185,000. Um, so we're going to have to submit for extension. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not saying that every other peer group out there doesn't carry something over but they're not going to carry what we're going to end up carrying over to the following fiscal year. So we are looking at very aggressive ways to spend down this year, and we'll be bringing them to you. Yeah, well, I, you know, th I mean, like I said, I, I, I think it's a, a great way of doing it. Yep. And um, I think hey, that if, we, if we have to go all out and spend the money, then, you know, right. go for it. Right. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think as years go on, we'll be a little bit more conservative, but right now we're trying to push first of all to get the word out uh, we'll be using other means whether they're free or not free we'll be bringing them up um, but right now we're just looking to push out and let everybody know within the two counties that we have this program running thank you yeah supervisor Bramer do you do you have a plan that you put together for all of the services and maybe you have and I just didn't 
the inner look at it. <laughs> they're trying to mirror Saratoga County, okay. what they're currently doing, but every county is very individualized. So we're, we need to get the word out to find out what the veterans' needs are and then really, you know, mold it around them. Based on, you say Facebook for advertising, it's perfect for the younger generation. Yeah, but what well, about our World War II and Korean well, veterans? veterans? That we have that True. are up in Chestertown or yeah. down in Salem. Or don't get internet access, yeah. right? So we're trying to just be very creative on how we're getting, we, we're going to try all kinds of media so that we can really target and get the word of the program. Supervisor Bramer. Counselors, like veteran counselors, who are going to be working with the veterans? But when you, when you, uh, I don't know how like a licensed counselor. Peer -peer a licensed counselor? Not necessarily licensed, but yeah, that would be in my. So uh, my, I mean, what exactly are the services we're providing to the veterans? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get veterans to come and reintegrate back into the community, whether they're. 22, 25, or they're 90. We want them to be able to go to hockey games or go to the movies with their family or whatever community events that we can get them to come out and start talking with other veterans. So we're going to be eventually creating a peer mentor group um, program that will all be trained by myself and Denise and Ken Winchell, who's the director for Washington County. Um, we are kind of working from the ground, so we're still trying to build exactly what is going to be um, done with the training. And this, this 185,000 that is exactly that what it's for. We'll put that out on the ground and be making right. an impact. Mm -hmm. As soon as we can start getting mentors and getting the word out, um, we're also going to be looking for drivers and eventually a, a peer board so that we can kind of do, have ideas bounced around between more than just myself and Denise and Ken. Yep. I know, that it seems yeah. very strange, doesn't it? Like you have this $185,000, what are you doing with it? What is yeah. it supposed to be used for? We're really learning as that each day goes by of what's going to be needed here, but it's not, it's not, so when you, we go back to the whole license strike, so we have um, one on-site licensed clinical social worker at the VA uh, primary clinic. Oh. Now, Vanessa's background is totally all, you know, set up for mental health. She's worked in mental health, uh, you know, areas before. So she is well-trained in, in that aspect as a first person, right? Right. And I guess she's a coordinator. She's yes. not necessarily one providing the services. I just want to know what's happening. Right. She will be that person her, making yeah. sure that yeah. they are warm handoff to the right person. Yeah. Whether because yeah. it's also for housing, this this program okay. is also for homelessness, not just for mental health. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and I know that Saratoga, from going to NISAC events, Saratoga has a very robust program. So, so just you know, mirroring what they are doing, I yeah. think will be. We can follow in their footsteps. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. No. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. And we just alter it how we need to for our veterans. Yeah. She's already met with Amy Hughes, okay. the Veterans Connection mm -hmm. in Saratoga yeah. County. Yeah. 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 Passed along quite a bit of information. So. Okay. Good. So back to uh, Supervisor yeah. McGowan. So yes, billboard seems a little extravagant or just looking to figure out how we can get the word out there and spend down money. In, especially by June 30th. Well, like I said, I, 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 I really do feel um, so, you know, a good place to start, and you know, I was just uh, um, you know, they, they, the billboards have changed, uh, you know, a lot too. But also, uh, tra the traveling I've seen too with the the digital ones, yeah. uh, where you can get uh, more out there and on. And uh, but no, uh, keep up good work. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on that? <laughs> All right, we need to vote on that. Yes. Uh, just More. just a couple questions. That that uh, cost is it? Is that just the rental, or does it include the uh, production of of the what's going to yeah. be on the billboard? So I'm un I'm going to have to tell you I'm unsure about that right now. Okay. Um, I know you brought that to my attention last weekend, 
again, having this all kind of be new for us, I, I didn't even think about it, truly. But uh, we did come up with some mock designs, um, but we'll get back to the committee regarding whether or not it, it, it incorporates the design of the billboard. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Supervisor Lowe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, with that in mind about getting back to us, uh, since this is all, the timing is important, the more we information we get out, uh, as soon as possible, the more effective this is going to be. So if you get back to us in the hour of September, this could be delayed another three or four months. So is, is there a way we can accommodate this process to expedite it? We know what they want to do. We know we have the money. Is there a way we can keep it? We can shorten it up by a couple months because if we go through our normal process it's going to be a couple months longer than Supervisor Lowe, so the six months for the three billboards is $15,900 but again that's just for the rental of the billboards. Um, it, if we go back into the administrator's thought process of um, what is it going to take for them to, if we send them like a design um, and I could certainly send it to the administrator for approval, you know, having that just to kind of shorten that timeline now. That, I mean, that but we great. would need probably additional money for the actual, for them to develop the graphics for that. But we have billboard. Are, are, are we, was your question uh, in reference to just the billboard or in reference to the entire program? The whole, the whole thing to, we want to get this thing moving and as opposed to dragging it out. So the veterans need the help. All right, we're just putting it off another week, another month, a month, another two months. There are some things that would normally go through our channels and take an extra couple months. But you say that's government. All right, let's see if we can do something more, a little bit more efficiently. Can we? Mm. Can we expedite this? Can we do it through you as the administrator and the? Uh, the Board of Supervisors would have to sure. delegate that to me, or if you wanted to have a working group of, of this committee, perhaps, for peer-to-peer -peer activities, the Board could delegate uh, authority to that group. Uh, uh, on, and I would suggest that if you were to do something like that, you would say within the scope of uh, Warren County purchasing uh, uh, regulations and state laws, federal laws. Um, and uh, I would suggest doing a reporting back to this committee every month on what that working group did or, or what I did. And that I'm, would, I'm not that advocating be, that necessarily, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to do it. That would okay. happen anyway. But Mr. Lowell, but it is a new program, and don't you think with a new program, sometimes it takes a little longer to get things off the ground than if you had a program that was already in place and, yeah, we want to do this and this and this. So I kind of think that should go back to Denise to make that decision. That, that's, that's my point. I mean... I don't have to carry the ball as opposed to having her have to wait for our next committee meeting where we can mull it over and say, oh, Denise, yeah, we like what you're doing. Is there a way that we can get, allow Denise and Vanessa more flexibility in moving this schedule along and not relying on our bureaucracy? Yes, uh, yes we, we could. It's just a question of how how much uh, this committee wants to delegate and how much the Board of Supervisors decides to delegate. Uh, as I said, you could delegate it. You could delegate it to me uh, in conjunction with Denise to make those decisions and maybe set a dollar threshold on that. Uh, if, if it's something that goes over a certain dollar threshold, we could have that go through committee. You could you could set up a small group of this committee as I, you know, the chair could pick maybe right. three and, and we could all jointly make those decisions. It's really the pleasure of the committee and ultimately the board. Can I make a motion then that we delegate? To well, just a minute, though. Ms. Bramer had her hand up, so I'd like to see what she... Didn't you have your hand up? I, I do. I have two comments. One, I'll wait. This one, though, I think... Can't we give her some level of money within which to spend for the advertising design? Like a little budget to say, go out and do the design and and then use the other 15000 to actually put it up, you know, rent the space. She the has only concern is I don't think we have any idea how much it's going to cost to do the design. She has $10,000 in the advertising budget right now, and I believe the next item would be to amend that 10000 and make it twenty five, uh, twenty five nine, okay. to to cover this. 
Um, Does that cover both the, the rental and the design? Well, again, Supervisor Fraser, I'm unsure about the design, but we had already brought down for budget for this year $10,000 that's sitting in an advertising fund in, in that GL account. I'm looking for the rental portion, yeah. figuring it can't be more than $10,000 to create the design. Okay, but we're fine. She should be fine. Amanda, would you explain that? Please? You do have the money already in your budget. You only need to appropriate. You have. You want to appropriate the $15,000 yes. into your budget? Yes. Do you already have the money in your budget that you would use for design? It's in there. It's in um, the, um, I don't know how to say it. It's, in, it, it's here. <laughs> it's here. It's already in your budget. You don't have to appropriate. No, I have to draw it down from from the um, from the grant, it, which is here. That's that's the money for the design, or just for the billboard? I see you have a request to appropriate fifteen thousand. Right. So that is just for the rental part. But the ten thousand is already in there. Already yes, in I'm your sorry. Budget. Yes. We say design or meaning production. So she's also. Design, production, so design. how? Yeah. Pardon me. Yeah. Okay. Right. Not just the rental. Supervisor Legnick. A quick Google search turns up that billboard production costs depend on format and construction, but generally range from three hundred to five hundred dollars for standard vinyl board. Design is also important, um, and hiring a design firm can cost from one hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars. There you go. I have more than enough. Okay. I. Supervisor. On this, I was going to bring it up later, but if we're talking about just a lump sum of money that she can use for advertising, I'd like to see her be able to use that for Facebook ad boosting as well. You can spend money on Facebook to push it out to more people than just would see it normally. And maybe our older veterans aren't on Facebook, but they could have children who are adults who would see that yep. and say, hey, my parent might benefit from this. So I think it's worthwhile to give her the authorization to spend for that too. Yep. If I can make a suggestion, um, uh, if, if we want to take these nitty-gritty decisions out of the committee and the board approval process, I would suggest that the Board of Supervisors delegate uh, this authority uh, to make these decisions uh, uh, to, and to authorize purchases, authorize contracts to uh, a group of maybe three of you that are interested and me and Denise, uh, and we can hammer it out in, in, in a working group setting. How does the committee feel about that? Good, good idea. Sounds good idea. All right. Yeah. So, Mr. Loeb. I, I didn't know if that's this. I mean, we, we're not here to run the Veterans Department. Right. We're here to hire Vanessa. We did a good job. Mm -hmm. and, and then our job is to give them the tools and resources to do their job. Right. And then we're on to something else. I, for one, see no reason for us to get involved in the nitty gritty. I mean, I could delegate, I would be happy to delegate it to you, Ryan, and Edna. <laughs> And not to put off the work, but what's, what's the point? What's the, gain, what's the gain for the community of war? I think I agree with Mr. Loeb on that particular one. I don't know how anyone else feels, Mr. McGowan. I, I, I agree with Mr. Loeb, too, and, and the chairwoman. I, you know, it, it's, we have to tr trust our department. It's so new, and, and time is of the essence on a lot of this stuff. Um, and if there are anything that's major, I'm sure you'd say, oh, yeah, an emergency meeting. We can get back together. Yeah. Exactly. Put a dollar amount on it. Um, yeah, yeah. What about a dollar amount? Yeah. Bramer, you're saying yes. What do you want for a dollar amount? The twenty-five thousand. She has ten thousand plus fifteen thousand in right. her advertising. Fifteen nine, yeah, twenty-five nine. What, what I was. Thank you. Excuse me, just a minute. Mary? My suggestion would just be to do up to 20 because that's a purchasing policy. Oh. Because um, then you have to go out to bid. So that would be my suggestion. Okay. So then we need a motion for that, correct? Yeah. We have a motion. Boy, that's right. We're still going on the same. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, let's go back then so that we uh, want to, the one for the advertising in Warren, Washington County for the billboard. So we had a motion on the floor, a second. So are we all in favor of that? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Now we want to go back to we need a motion then for the dollar amount. Is that correct, Amanda? All right, so would someone like to make? Yes. I'm sorry, Supervisor. I'm only asking for 59. I'm not asking for 20. I, I think what we're saying is going, <laughs> go, going forward, we can administratively approve expenses up to $20,000. If it's, it's an expense higher than 20, we bring it back to the committee. Right, and, that, and that's fine. Uh, for, for all aspects of this program. I just want to make sure you understand I already have 10 sitting there. there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. We want you to be able to spend it without having come back to us. Okay. I'm just making sure you understand what I already have there. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. All right. So the motion is, Ms. Springer? That um, veteran services can spend up to $20,000 for advertising purposes, marketing, advertising. All right. A second to that motion. Mr. McGowan, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Now, do we need a motion to say that we're going to let you and me work with their department, or we don't need anything for that? Well, I'm, I'm just a little confused. Uh, were we saying strictly for advertising expenses that we wanted to delegate that authority, or do we want to delegate that authority for all expenses of the peer-to-peer -peer program? I would think you'd want all expenses. I would say all expenses. You would say yeah, all? Yeah, I would say all, because it's being such a new program. We, we don't exactly. know. You know right, exactly. So can we change that to all expenses, whoever made the motion? I didn't remember I did, now. I did. Can we do that change? That's fine with me. I would like to say, though, that we still have our, you know, Denise and our coordinator come back and give us monthly updates. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think there's on. no question about that. So we did change that. Then. Okay, so all in favor of that change to all expenses, say aye. 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 Oppose? Carry. Okay, are we done with that part of it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Denise, I think we're on to number four. <laughs> um, number four. So I did read the, um, oh, oh, so I'm sorry. The request, I, I'm requesting to amend the credit card policy and secure a credit card for the program for incidentals to a limit of $500. Denise, can we go back and do number four first oh. and amend the budget? Oh, please. Yes. I will sorry. make that motion. All right, second to that motion. I'll second the motion. Supervisor McGowan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Denise, now we're on number five. <laughs> Request to amend the credit card policy and secure credit card for the peer-to-peer um, -peer program in Sedan right, to a limit of $500. There are many times that Vanessa is going to be out in the community, let's say at a coffee shop or something, where she's having a peer-to-peer group meeting with veterans and needs to be able to either have cash on her to pay for coffee and a sandwich for veterans. Um, I don't like the idea of cash, so I was thinking that a credit card with a limit on it might be able to suffice what, what is needed here without having her to spend her own money out of her pocket and with numerous weeks for reimbursement, which is not feasible in my eyes. Supervisor McGowan. Oh, make a motion? <laughs> that we approve the resolution. Okay. Second to that. Is that your second, Mr. Loeb? Yes. Any discussion on that? Yes, sir. Can, can this be accommodated within the existing policy? Um, to my knowledge, from again, I'm not, uh, these resolutions sometimes you're reading them, but I see numerous departments that have their own secured credit card. I'm thinking that we need to be added to that list. I could be wrong, but... Um, I, I would defer to Tammy and also Amanda on the policies uh, that we currently have. There's specific, we have a certain limit, I think it's 292 or 252 now, but they are specific cards, so we'll have to get a separate card. It's pretty, once it gets through board, it's pretty simple to do. Um, but it'll, have, it'll be an, its own card and it'll probably, I would assume it's probably going to be in um, me or, or uh, Vanessa's name. We have this, um, we have a couple of small limit cards. Uh, we have two cards that are a $1,000 limit. I think Julie Butler has one. Um, and I'm not positive, I think CPW has the other $1,000 limit card. Um, and those are eBay purchases or something. Okay, sounds good. All right, all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Um, going down. So we are, are going to be looking at, these are just discussion items, I don't have anything else as far as action that is needed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to skip down to number two under those discussion items because we pretty much went over number one. Right. We are going to be looking at developing a, a, a mentor driver program. Uh, pretty, I would like to mirror something 
close to what OFA is doing with their volunteering uh, program or set up a program of volunteers. I do believe that they um, drive people within the community to maybe doctor's appointments or whatever else. Um, so I would like to mirror something like that where they're getting mileage reimbursement only. But we are going to need uh, a group of people eventually down the road to help with uh, things like getting a veteran to the, just to the primary clinic down here or maybe to um, an interview for a job, you know, whatever is needed within, you know, our community or our, I should say our counties because it's not just our community. So we'd have a group for Washington County and a group for Warren County. Good idea. Yeah. But we would, again, we would want to um, give to pay the mileage reimbursement from the grant. I'm not sure what is entailed with being able to do that, but um, uh, that is something that will be foreseen as we get mentors and they go through their training. We could bring it back to the board the committee. All right. Any questions regarding that? All right. Thank you. Next one. A couple other things that we're looking to, to do. We want to do a couple of launch initiatives. Now, I'm not sure whether or not we're going to be able to make them happen for 2019. Maybe the uh, letter B on this list, but um, another county, I believe it's Putnam County, I'm waiting for some information from them. They actually do an annual Ground Zero bus trip, free of charge to the veteran and their family, out of their grant, their peer-to-peer -peer grant. I would like to initiate something like that. Uh, Vanessa heard about it when I came back from a committee for a conference out in Syracuse and she's very much interested in, in rolling something like that out also. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about it, that we, we're thinking about doing something like that. Maybe two buses, one in Warren County, one in Washington County, and we'll see what the, what the take is on it. And if it's uh, very well received, we'll do something like that on an annual basis. Um, a veteran, uh, let it be uh, the veteran and family movie day at the Aviation Mall, again starting small. So another county provides a uh, veteran and uh, family movie day where the veteran and their family can go in, they, there's no cost for the movie, no cost for a small popcorn and a drink. And the peer-to-peer -peer program pays for that whole uh, experience and the bonding of the, you know, the veterans within that uh, um, exercise, we'll call it. So that's another thing. Um, yes, Mr. McGowan. Yes. Uh, yes, I just uh, uh, was talking to a gentleman. He, uh, maybe a program you can get into the movies, and I couldn't wait. For $25 a month, he gets, you know, he's retired now, and he is a veteran. But uh, for $25 a month, he gets a little thing that uh, on his phone, and he can go and see any movie whenever he wants. Really? You know, any t it was like for, you know, if you don't like the movie, just get up and look for twenty five hours, um, so you can see unlimited amount of movies. Maybe it's something that uh, you can look at, and it's only through Regal, but it might be something that maybe uh, Regal would would want to look into for veterans. Um, you know, we get a, a standard, um, you know, a uh, you know a standard. Uh, you know, visa card or whatever that, uh, not a visa, but, you know, something that you could say, all right, you, you upload this and you, you have a one-time use that you can go to the movies with your family. So, I mean, hey, who knows what Regal will do, but uh, I, I'm thinking, geez, for $25 a month, and especially with those new comfortable chairs and that, I mean, it's right. quite and I'll say, amazing. <laughs> Supervisor, I thank you so much for, for passing stuff like this down to us because I was not aware of that. And we would be open to anything that you think might work. Let's hear about it. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, you know, and I mean, we got to, you know, to have this money and not use it. I mean, we got to come up with different ideas of things, bowling night, I mean, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Try and get these veterans together and, and peer them up with each other um, and, and, and re for reintegration back into the community, especially the newer ones after a discharge from service. So thank you. I think it's going to be a wonderful program. I think you gals have already come up with some good ideas. And like Denise says, if anybody has any ideas, pass them on to her. Because sometimes it's something 
they wouldn't even think about but they've heard about it happening someplace else. Mr. Moore, did you? Uh, oh, just one more thing. I think we ought to establish some metrics so that we can uh, um, uh, identify what we consider success for the program and we can report those statistics back to the committee. Uh, I, was, I would think uh, maybe some decent ideas for that to start off is how many uh, mentors were able to uh, uh, recruit and get into the program as well as how many mentor veteran pairs we, we form uh, and anything else that, that the two of you uh, think would be appropriate. So we should talk about that and bring that back as well. Um, Ryan, we, we will have, uh, we actually received the report. Do you want to go, go ahead? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to report to the Office of Mental Health once a month. And then at the end of the year, it all goes down to the School of Social Work in Albany. So we will already have those numbers. We'd be happy to share them. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Great. All right. Any other comments? Anything else anyone wants to bring up? Supervisor yeah, I, Cano. Uh, right. Um, I think it would be uh, productive if uh, your good office uh, could meet with uh, these women to uh, dissect this program. We are purchasing contractual and legal requirements uh, so that uh, some of these issues are, uh, are understood uh, so that we can move forward in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. We, we, we had a couple of early uh, hiccups, uh, 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 and uh, I spoke with the auditor last week. Uh, we have a path forward on that, uh, and she's not anticipating having problems with, with the program, uh, but if we do, we, we can call down to Saratoga and see how they handle it, because anything that we handle, they've, they, they've been through it there, uh, and we will, get, uh, we will get with Mary and um, uh, Julie Butler as well. Saratoga program's been established, and, and they were one of the pilot counties since 2012, so they've seen it all. So we're just really trying to mirror their aspect of how they go business for business, uh, rolling out the program, using the money appropriately, that kind of thing. So, it makes it nice that you have somebody that you can look to to ask for a little bit of help mm -hmm. starting out with this program. Okay, anybody else on the committee? Supervisor Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairwoman. I did um, just like your Facebook page, and um, <laughs> you, you. you have, um, did you pick out a logo yet for the peer-to-peer? -peer? <laughs> we have. We want to, yes, to my, yeah, you're both. So um, just so everybody, um, like, these are our mock designs. Did they ask you to ask that question? They just have to have This is like the mock design for the bulletin board. Again, it's not anything finalized. It's just something we came up with. Thank you. I like that. There we go. Those are postcards that we are going to be sending out to yep. the community. Do you have some? Yeah, right yeah. Oh, I don't you have one. Yeah, here. These are extra things. Yeah, there are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's neat. Thank you. There's extra. You good? Well, thank you very much for your time. I think you're all set. We are. Thank you very much, Vanessa. We're happy to have you on board. Thank We're looking you. forward to hearing many good things. Thank you. Call yourself over there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Welcome, Thank you. Hmm. Okay, Chris, now we're ready. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Now you're fine. But Denise, I think that's one of the longest meetings you've ever had. You I know. We're going to get out of here in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank everyone here for recognizing that Amy McBurn is doing a really nice job up at uh, Countryside. Uh, mm -hmm. She's really the bull by the horns there and uh, a lot of initiative and uh, doing a good job as well with uh, some other kind of uh, difficult situations. Uh, but uh, she's doing great and uh, she's working well with um, Nina Mastriani, our Deputy Commissioner as well, so thank you for that. Um, I think we'll uh, start with uh, our action um, agenda here and then uh, there's a discussion about one of these items. I have a couple of guests with me. Uh, I have Nina Mastriani, the Deputy Commissioner, and of course I've got Chris Hunsinger here to discuss that uh, last piece. So uh, when we get there, if you have questions, uh, they have the be. Okay. And the first item is a personnel request. Uh, notice of intent to fill a vacant position of social welfare examiner number 40 in the SNAP unit. This is a grade 8, step 7. Base salary is 34,988. This is due to a promotion. Along with that, there's a notice of intent to fill the vacant position of social welfare examiner number 38 in the Medicaid unit. Grade 8, step 6. This is due to a lateral transfer to the uh, TA unit effective August 19th as well. Positions are mandated and reimbursed. I'd so like to make that motion, Supervisor Driscoll, second by Supervisor McGowan. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Yeah. The um, second item I have is a request resolution uh, for an authorization to the New York State Office of Children and Family Services Resource Allocation Plan uh, for 219. It's outlined as attached. This is an annual thing that we bring to committee um, with contractual agreements um, involving the Warren County municipalities, the towns, uh, villages, and cities of uh, Warren County to reimburse a portion of the cost for recreational programs. The funds are allocated annually uh, through DSS to provide youth recreation programs throughout the county. All right, so I'd like to make that motion. Supervisor Leggett, seconded by Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion? Supervisor Leggett. Thank you, Mr. Chairwoman. Uh, changes from last year at all on these um, uh, appropriations? There are no changes that I'm aware of. We did make a couple of adjustments for certain times uh, last year that uh, were brought to our attention, but those are already in place. So I don't think there's any other changes. All right. Any other discussion? Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Thank you. Number three is a request resolution to authorize uh, renewal with the agreement with the Council of Prevention of Alcohol and Substance Abuse for Youth Court Program. This is for the year of 2019 for a total amount of $69,000. Youth Court program improves the county's capacity to support youth development and to deter youth from further involvement in the criminal justice system. Right, so I'd like to make that motion. Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor Lowe. Any discussion? All, right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Number four is to request a resolution. Uh, requesting permission for the department to enter into an agreement, an MOU with the Warren County Employment Training Administration. This would be for referrals for temporary assistant and supplemental nutrition assistant program, uh, employment training purposes. Uh, the rationale is that um, we have a shared interest in uh, trying to find employment and meaningful employment with livable wages. Um, this is going to help going forward as far as uh, enabling people to um, 
earn enough income and to get permanent employment so that they can get off these programs. Um, this is uh, Department of Social S Services working specifically with a worker at um, employment and training and we will work collaboratively with, collaboratively with them to improve um, our um, performance in that um, goal. Uh, motion by Supervisor Drips, goal seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Questions? Anyone want more information? Supervisor Leggett. Yeah, thank you. This, this sounds like a good program. Mm -hmm. This has not been done before. <laughs> so um, if, if I could maybe provide some background. Well, that'd be good. Our staff work together all the time, and we're always talking about ways that we can work better together. And um, recently we had a new manager uh, from the Department of Labor uh, in our office. She just started about a year ago. And uh, when her and I got talking about some of these things, she said, well, you know, they do that down in Schenectady where social services and um, employment training share an office and they have this agreement. So we actually went down and did a field trip. Uh, Nina and I uh, went down um, to uh, Schenectady and, um, you know, you walk in and it looks like, you know, our social service building down the far right, they have a, you know, one booth for, you know, employment training. Um, but they, they work collaboratively. Uh, we then found out that um, Rensselaer County also started doing that. But to the best of our knowledge, they're the only other two counties in the whole state that have a similar kind of agreement. Uh, so we went and met with Rensselaer County as well uh, to see how they were doing it. And their model's a little different, and, you know, what we're looking to do is more like what Rensselaer County does. We're not in the same building. Um, but I, I agree with you, it makes sense. Um, we've been trying to figure out how to make this happen for a while, and um, we finally found a way to, to make it work. At least we found a way to make That's good. Good idea. I don't know if you want to add anything. Anyone have any other questions? You know, well, we're, we're just looking to take that um, diversion approach, helping people get jobs, give them the skills that they need. We'll do an orientation program, and, um, you know, we've been working together to, for our staff and the employment staff to each have, you know, their area of expertise of determining eligibility and then taking the mindset of changing it into employment. So we have the resources here in our community. Let's utilize them. Yeah, that's great. So right now you're looking like one person, is that what we're saying? Or you have many that oh, you're going to be, be working? Okay. We would have, so we would have um, one examiner who would, their main role would be working with employment, making referrals, monitoring compliance within programs with a, a senior that would supervise in that area. And then that examiner would work with the employment staff. Okay and coordinating those programs. Yeah. Sounds you good. You have two, three, you would have... We, you we, would, we would have a primary counselor, but then right. someone that would also be able to back up, you know, also train so that they can pick up. Thank you for your time. Just a uh, money question in terms of the cost of doing this in DSS. I think I, uh, I think somebody said we were using triple FS, or are we going to dip into the workforce investment funds? No, we're going to, we're planning on triple FF. Okay, okay. All right. And, and go ahead. Let me elaborate on that, Ryan. Sure. Uh, so, because our money is federal, we have to comply with uh, Office of Management and Budget requirements. So, we do what is called fund accounting, and, and literally every week, um, all of our staff write down what they spent their time on. So, it would be a, it would, it would be a direct reimbursement for us. Great. It's like every other program. Okay, good. Supervisor Bramer. Did you say that there will be DSS staff in the workforce building? In not that office? Physically not in their not? building. They would be in our office and we just go there just to do the orientation and programming. Yeah. How often does that happen? We're looking at the orientation being once a month. Okay. Kind of depends on numbers. Right. Um, Rensselaer County does it every two weeks, um, but they have more numbers. That's right. Okay. Any other discussion? Sure, thank you very much because I think this is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. One of the big deterrents to economic growth is our workforce. Right? So I'm curious, do you have any metrics and any metrics that came from Rensselaer Service or our community that we might be able to apply and say, how do we try this? And 
how are we doing, how well are we doing, and how can we expand it if we need to get to that point? I don't have any specific numbers, and Rensselaer County's only been doing it for a few months. But you're spot on, and in, in, in one of the reasons why um, you know we've really been uh, looking to do something like this is, you know, we have a declining workforce in terms of absolute numbers at a time when there's increased demand. So we need to find you know, the non-traditional worker, and we need to find a way to, to, to find people that are you know standing on the sidelines and, and get them into full employment. So. That's that's part of where it's coming from. Exactly those reasons. Yeah. I can elaborate a little bit on that. Um, I think that um, when we first started talking about this, uh, we primarily looked at our performance, what we're doing in our county. So I think the most important metric here is to watch our numbers change. We want to see improvement in participation uh, with our applicants and our consumers to achieve some gainful employment and to move off of the assistance. So the metric that we're really going to be looking at is the percentage of compliance. Uh, we're going to be looking at long-term employment and see what kind of um, outcomes we have. Um, as Chris was saying, uh, it's fairly new and it really is kind of cutting edge. Nobody else is really doing this. Um, I would like to thank Chris and Nina for really um, the initiative on this as well because it was a lot of work hammering this out. Um, Julie also helped uh, immensely with, with parts of this as well as the fiscal person. But um, they really have done a lot of work. They've traveled around the different counties, uh, put together a, a, a really good program and we're excited to uh, start this. So um, yeah, the, the metric that we're going to be looking at is uh, improving our performance in our county, getting more people employed um, and uh, that's going to lead to a, you know a better life for them as well so we want people to get um, you know have gainful employment that provides a living wage so um, thank you very much thank all of you for your input mr. Moore did you have something oh I just was going to suggest safety net case loads would probably be the most important uh, metric that was actually where um, Schenectady County saw a, a benefit it people were getting employed prior to even their case, their eligibility case being open. So. And another thing, uh, uh, temporary assistance um, uh, and safety net are, uh, you know, what used to be called welfare. Temporary assistance, we pay for 1% of those costs, uh, safety net. It, is it 29 or 71 that we pay for? We pay 71. So. It's in um, not just the interest of our clients to get back on their feet, but also to the county's finances. Supervisor Bramer, did you have something before we vote on this? No, I think this is a great initiative. I, I'll talk to them offline. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think in the weed question. Right. And we appreciate all the hard work that yeah. you all put into getting this in motion. I think that's wonderful. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Don't have anything else. If there's any questions, uh, feel free to ask. But I think we're all set here. I have attached a, um, a um, just a little outline of some things that are going on over there, activities and uh, meetings and stuff that we've been uh, doing in the past month. So we always I appreciate delve that. Delve into that, but, but, but thank you. We do appreciate welcome. that. Uh, yes, Ms. Bramer. Thanks. At the last board meeting, we did uh, pass a resolution to send a letter regarding the changes to SNAP. And yes, I'm wondering yeah. if you've heard anything new or any I, changes to the reduction. Yeah, I can give you um, an update. Um, we haven't had it heard that there's any changes yet. I do have a meeting uh, with all the commissioners in our region on September 12th. The deadline for submitting the letters is September 23rd. We are um, actively developing what kind of numbers uh, we will be looking at in our county, and we have received those. Nina and I have been working on those and going over those to see how it's going to impact people in our county. Um, and um, on September 12th, when I attend this meeting, there's going to be a discussion about how the counties are going to address this issue and what types of um, things we might put into this letter. Um, I have um, spoken uh, with Tammy uh, in regards to this, and I will be drafting a letter um, that can be used by anyone and edited in any way, shape, or form that they feel is appropriate uh, to send these out. So I am working on that and uh, providing uh, more after my commissioner's meeting. 
Okay. Thank you. Give us anything by the full board meeting, which is the 20th, I think. We could do that. Definitely will. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Supervisor Conover. Would this be the time, Madam Chairman, to ask a financial question? Well, I think Julie's going to give her report next, right, Chris? And then we'll okay. right. Let her give a report, and then you'll be the first to call us. Okay. For overtime, um, we're just trying to keep that as low as possible. Um, TA had a couple empty positions, so um, uh, overtime was authorized for several workers um, for four hours each to try to get them caught up on their caseload. Um, the rest is kind of limited to CPS and on calls and that kind of thing. So moving forward, we'll just keep trying to keep it down as much as possible. Then on revenue and expenditures, Moving into the second half of the year, I'm hoping to see the revenue start picking up as it generally does towards the end of the year. I don't have any major concerns at this point. If anybody has any questions. Mr. Conover. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you know, going to, you know, the expenditure picture was uh, increased slightly year over year, but that was followed by a corresponding increase on the revenue side. And so I guess what I'm saying, uh, I guess my question is twofold. Uh, it would appear that our expenditure, the budget's been amended up slightly at $107,000. So I guess what I'm wondering uh, over the uh, revenue side is uh, if you have any questions. I think almost for every budget amendment we've done have been grants. We've, we've gotten like three se separate grants this year alone and we've always had a corresponding um, because they're a hundred percent up to the allocation that we've gotten so the revenue um, should match the thing is you have to spend and then we claim against it, the grant and sometimes usually there's about a three month lag um, we were awarded a SNAP grant we're still spending the money trying to provide all the things that fell within that SNAP grant, what was allowed. So we probably will see revenue coming in on, on that probably well into next year. So the, I guess what fundamentally the question is, uh, uh, the balance between expenses and, and revenue that uh, I'm very, feeling fairly comfortable at this point in time that the revenue will be as I am. We, we've had some non-reimbursable expenses, but we're always, always trying to get them reduced. Sometimes we can uh, provide things to make a payment reimbursable. So that enters into it, of course, because, you, you know, it, sometimes you don't have any control over a non-reimbursable expense. And it, sometimes they can add up to a lot of money that you did not anticipate. It's scary. I spent a lot of time, not to get off course here, but I did spend a lot of time on the 2020 budget trying to get those reimbursements as close as possible. But like you said, you know, it, it really is best guess in past history. But it was an area I spent a lot of time on because I'm, you know, always concerned about that. But that additional, I think it was almost around $2 million in additional revenue, do you think we're reasonably on track? I think based on the claims that we have in that have not been settled yet, I think we're anticipating a large amount of money for the year end. All right, any other questions from the committee? Um, Chris and Julie, you're all set then. Nothing else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you all very much. Good afternoon. Oh, I figured that.
We can fix that. Yeah, why wouldn't you give me a county? I don't know. Special packet. Oh, that's the information. I take it back. Thank you. Clarification, the packets are just things that we're wanting you to take back to your town and for 112 in Queensbury, maybe not all the supervisors are getting them because we're, but Thank if you'd you. like some, we're happy to make some uh, for you. Thank you. I was feeling, feeling a little left out there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Have you already gone to the city? City Hall? Uh, in process. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're all set. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for our first resolution request, uh, we need to authorize a contract with Greg Morris, who's a physical therapist, to provide physical therapy services for our home care and preschool programs. And we have current rates, which are attached to the resolution request, and we're looking for automatic renewal unless there's a 30-day termination notice by either party. That's attachment first. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make that motion. Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Um, second is to authorize a contract with Jennifer Wood, uh, occupational therapist for uh, occupational therapy services for our home care and preschool programs at the established rate, including an automatic renewal annually unless there's a 30-day written termination notice by either party. I'd like to make that motion, Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And three times a charm to authorize a contract with Jamie Martin, who is a registered dietitian uh, for nutritional services um, for our patients. And this will also be automatically renewed annually unless there's a 30-day written termination notice by either party. All right, someone would like to make that motion. Supervisor McGowan, second by Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Um, under informational items, we have an intent to fill listed, and we're looking for a request to the personnel committee to approve filling a vacant registered professional nurse position, um, registered professional nurse 11 and nursing positions obviously are needed and they're reimbursable based on insurance coverage of the patient load. All right, someone would like to make that motion. Supervisor McDevitt seconded by Supervisor Loeb. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, those are all the resolution requests. Thank you. Um, referral for pending items. There were none. Jumping to information for discussion or review on the time for attachments one and two for our financials. Okay, these are our financials as of um, August 13th. Um, I did accrue for, we did close the month of June for our MCH and child programs and I included $246,295 into our revenues for that month. 
plus our WIC grant and our BT grant for the quarter um, were also accrued in our revenue. Down below on the bottom of attachment one, you'll see the payroll com comparison from this year to last year, year to date. Um, we are still down compared to last year by over $19,000. Um, at this point, and this is this is showing the first payroll in August as of August 4th, you'll see that we were at 51% of the budget, which is good, being that we're in August, and that last year at this time we were at 60.3%, 36% of the budget um, last year at this time, so we're below budget at the same time compared to last year. Um, attachment 2, which is our comparison month monthly um, year to date 813 last year and 813 this year um, again the salaries are reflected before equipment there was some um, vehicles purchased in our laptops that we had to purchase last year to start our new uh, crescendo programming contractual expenses um, are down again a lot of it is related and most of it is related to the preschool program waiting for those vouchers it's just a timing issue um, and I did leave it in here still that we still have the one vendor that still has not gotten um, rates to the state. I verified that again last year to make sure that, or last week, that is the case still. We're still waiting for that. Um, we hold on to those invoices so they're not reflected here because, of course, what they're billing isn't correct. Um, employee benefits, again, we're down, um, but I did note that both June and July are not posted yet or weren't at this time. They have been sent, at least June has in our um, uh, retire me, retiree benefits, so that has been updated now, but comparing this, we're down a couple months there, and that was the only thing. Revenues, slightly up overall, um, and again, that's due to timing, and it looks like last year, by this time, we had revenues in for our preschool program, as opposed to where we are right now, and again, it's just a timing thing, or this year, we had them in more than, than we did last year, so again, and that's something, that the state gives us a date when things have to be submitted to them, so it's just a matter of, again, timing for that. And that's, that's it for the financials. Well, Thank you. Satisfied. Supervisor Leggett. Uh, why is the lag time from June on the, on the payroll not, why don't you have those numbers? On payroll or do you mean the retiree health benefits? On, I guess on. The, uh, the retiree health benefits, I just noticed, I don't know, it's just the treasurer just hadn't posted the numbers okay. when I printed this. So it's just the benefits, it's not the, the payroll itself? No, payroll is right up to, well, this as of this date, August 4th was the last payroll that was posted. Since then, last week it was, but I had printed these before. So now the full month of August is in, but at least as of this time, everything was posted up to the August 4th payroll. I would like to say, Tom, I like the way you give us the notes at the bottom. I just think it makes it much easier for us to understand what's happened during the past month. So I appreciate you doing that. You're welcome. All right, looking at the status of referrals, it's attached to three valves here. Any questions or providers? Okay, so um, this is as effective um, June of 19. Um, last month it looks like we had a better month than this month, but this or the month of June does show pretty much equal to April and March. Um, hospital census has been down a little bit. Uh, rehab census has been down a little bit. Not really sure, you know, what's going on there. Um, we tend to be getting more referrals from the Albany area as of late, which is nice. You know, getting those. Um, other than that, everything is pretty much status quo. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't so see you. It looks like a trend of that this, this year is well below last year, consistent. Yes. Do you think for next year we'll be holding the same? You know, things have changed. So I would I think, I would guess that it's going to be pretty much the same. And again, you have the issue with um, insurance is not wanting to pay the hospital for, you know, being readmitted. So they keep more, more and more patients are going in as an observation status. So since they go in as observation, they don't come out as new ones to us because they're already ours oh. before they went in. That's a, a big push for that. Uh, Spramer. I hate to say this, but are we looking at reducing staff at all if we're going to be dropping off early like this? No, because the acuity of these patients are much, much worse than what they were before. I mean, everything for us and for our reimbursements, we get more reimbursement when, 
you can prevent these people from having to go back into the hospital and they are just so much sicker because the hospital can't keep them. They're sending, you know, these patients home. Um, you know, even the ones that are, go you know, going with observation, our, our nurses are strapped. They are strapped. These I mean... Are, these are the number of referrals, not the number of visits. Yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> then maybe we don't need this anymore. I mean, what are we tracking this for if this isn't really... I think initially because our certificate of need, uh, well, they got rid of the certificate of need and there were other home care agencies serving our population. Right. We did that as a way to try to track and see, you know, how it was affecting our agency and we also wanted to kind of be able to compare it to other agencies and mm -hmm. what they were seeing, what they were getting for referrals. Maybe it's becoming test day, I don't know, but... Um, well, I think maybe that makes sense to me why we would track it that way. Um, so maybe not stop tracking this, but maybe there's something else that can help us understand like the workload that your department is experiencing. Because this makes me feel like, well, we're not doing that much anymore. Which is right. true. Right. This is what you're telling me. Right. So how do we compare to other counties? As far well, as from case the referrals, given the fact that there's probably other home care agencies in other counties affecting their county departments too. Right. How and there's... Um, from a home care agency and a county standpoint, there's a listserv, so the counties are in communication. Okay. We're seeing a lot of the same things. Um, kind of hard to compare counties to counties because you've got large counties, small counties, right. medium counties. You've got counties that are rural, counties that are kind of a metropolis kind of scenario. But we do the best to work on issues and kind of deal with any of those issues. I think um, from a local standpoint, looking at other home care agencies, we're able to get in within the 24 hours versus some other agencies taking a little longer, so we are still remaining consistent in that initiative. Mm -hmm. um, as far as patients and us being able to maintain the staffing to be able to cover our patients, right now we are working hard, you know, to make sure that we have the staffing to actually address the patients that we get, which is very close, which is why we had to ask for our I know. nursing We're position happy. because yeah, so um, it ebbs and flows you know, with staffing and we're trying to make sure that we have the staffing we need to address the needs that we have for our patients. But the referrals are one number and I think what Val was saying with increased um, acuity and she can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know what that means but like acuity. I'm acuity is the difficulty. Yeah. The difficulty of patients. So maybe a little ways back where our patients you know, we might have had more referrals. Maybe those were maybe an admit discharge or an admit deal with a tip and then discharge. But now, like, we're seeing sicker patients that are taking more visits and this, that, and whatever. So where we might have less referrals, we still probably have a lot of the same visits because our nurses are busy. Um, but we even jumping back five years, ten years, the patients coming home are coming home with pumps and IVs and yeah. chemotherapy and wound vacs, which are a lot more complex nursing than just doing well checks when they get home or doing a dressing change. And the other thing, they're not, what I'm saying is they're not counted today as a referral. Where in the past, the hospital admitted them so when they came back out to us, they were considered a referral. They're still the same patients. It's just now they go in and a lot of them are observation status. So they don't count as a referral to us because they were never actually admitted back into the hospital. So we're still seeing the same amount. Oh, okay, I see that now. Yes. And this jumps back to the whole district initiative which remember we got a lot of different money from but it's because we're working with our hospital and our provider populations in a collaborative effort to try to prevent people from going back to the hospital. So the hospital and other agencies get a ding against them or lose reimbursement if somebody goes back in the hospital within a certain amount of days of their discharge. So that's why the hospital is changed to an observation versus an admission. Because when they're discharged from a referral status, what happens is it comes out and it's counted differently than a patient that might have been ours goes in for a quick observation and comes back out where they're not actually admitted to the hospital. That seems like the hospital is gaining. <laughs> well, it is, but Sorry, you're that's stuck. I mean, you know, yeah, you yeah. have a policy that's written and you have agencies that have to comply and everybody's not a cookie cutter in the same thing. So if there's individual needs and concerns, you would never tell somebody they couldn't go back to the hospital right. if they're not breathing. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're like, okay, you're okay, and you can go back home versus oh, you're not breathing, let's bring you in, do 50,000 tests, admit you, and then send you back home. They're trying to be more realistic about the services they're providing, you know, and trying to be cheaper about the care while still advocating for a patient and not turning them away. Yeah. And they also, the hospital and the primary care providers also now have, um, they're called different things in different communities, but like, if you're a doctor and your patient goes back in the hospital, you're going to have one of your staff call and say, I understand you've been in the hospital, how are you doing? Hospital through discharge from their emergency room, hey, no, you were in the hospital emergency room, how are you doing? And then you have your home care nurse. So you've got more calls, more follow-up happening mm -hmm. to try to prevent that readmission. And if they are readmitted, trying to find out why, so you can do education on, well, if you had those symptoms, did you know you could call your home care nurse? Did you know you could call us? You know, I mean, we are trying to work with the community on that, but it's made our numbers kind of not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Mr. Moore has something he'd yeah. like to say. Also, just in to, to reiterate what Janelle said about counties being different, many counties have sold their medallions and no longer have a shot. Uh, Saratoga County is one of them. And that has a lot to do with geography, uh, uh, private sector competition, the visiting nurses in uh, Schenectady that took a lot of that business away. Uh, and it's just different here. It's, uh, it's more appropriate to have a, uh, uh, a county uh, operation because it, it can be difficult to get to these patients. All right, Mr. Loeb. Thank you, Madam Chair. With the uh, time years going by, new evolution in advancement in medical care, costs, hospital rehab units, public health. How, how is the what's the curve on patient outcome and health health wise? The, the original presentation. One might say, wow, this is, we're getting more acute uh, patients with more acute requirements, and yet when you look at the whole picture, what's the end result? How are we looking as far as the end result for all our patients compared to 10 years ago? You know, people living longer, so we're able to sustain life in the home and help work with the families on goals that Tammy's got. Part of the district project, one of the projects that we did was very heavily involved in with the hospital and home collaborative. That is one of the only collaboratives in New York State that actually showed improvement in keeping people out of the hospital. So they received um, incentive payments for pay for performance that went beyond you, you get paid because you're providing service versus you're performing well. So um, that's one metric you want to keep people out of the hospital. Could you make this brief, Mr. Oak, oh, please? Could you just a that? quick, just for everybody's understanding. What I'm not talking about the accounting part of uh, keeping people out of the hospital, but as far as how are the patients doing? Whether they go to the hospital or any place, at the end of the year, are they saying, you know what, I'm better off than I would have been five years ago with, this, with the way the system worked five years ago. Are they? they better off today than they would have been five years ago, regardless of whether I'm they go back I'm not sure how we gather that information. Currently, we don't, I mean, we have satisfaction surveys with our services, but I don't know if that captures that type of information, and I think you're looking more comprehensive community. What's your gut feeling? We can, I mean, I would like to think everybody that's a partner in healthcare is doing a great job and that we're helping people and people are happy and feeling that they're healthier. I mean, I would certainly think a more acute patient coming home and us being able to manage that patient at home so they're not in the hospital would have a little higher quality of life because their family can come and visit them at home mm -hmm. and maybe they're happier psychologically or psychosocially by being able to have more independence than being in kind of a sterile hospital room. But and then the monitoring and the education in the home so that the yeah. can come from back into the hospital, you know, so give them a little bit more quality. We can kind of look at our data. We're in the middle of the community health assessment program now to try to see if we're capturing that data for our community in any way, but right now I can't think of a, a marker that we have that I'd be able to quantify that. Well, you give me a couple markers anyway, so that's good. Thank yeah, you. Okay, Mr. Supervisor Mr. Driscoll, and then we Thank do have to move on. Yeah, and I'll be quick. Uh, a few months ago, we, we also uh, had a nice conversation about um, 
particularly the um, uh, the service provided up in in the uh, in the blue line uh, communities and. Um, and I think some uh, supervisors were pleasantly uh, surprised at, at the volume of, uh, of service that were provided to those communities, as well as as to call to Queensbury. But uh, I think that, that in kind of uh, uh, following uh, Mr. Moore's comments, uh, uh, it's important uh, to, to this county that we, we maintain that, uh, that shot uh, services, and uh, particularly because of the diversity in the, uh, the county. Uh, we're we're competitive in the uh, in the uh, uh, southern towns, um, uh, but we're hitting home runs up in the north. I believe. Thank you. Thank you, All right, Janelle. We'll move. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Conover. Thank you. I think though that for um, analysis purposes, I think uh, Mr. Framer was uh, going in the correct direction here. That we have the need to standardize the numbers to the new reality. Well, we need to move to, from a management point of view, we need to move to a new set of um, metrics, uh, home visits. I'm not going to suggest what, I'm not going to be enough to suggest what that might be, but home visits might be one possibility because we've gone from a, a situation where we were the singular child provider, correct? Mm -hmm. And now we have multiple child providers. So where are we? I think from a management point of view, we, I think our interest is as well as on the quality side, on the other side, within the universe of, of, of the provision of that service within Warren County, uh, what uh, uh, what is our um, uh, share of that? And and, and as uh, as Supervisor Jusco pointed out, that there might be uh, that might vary depending upon region and density of the region. So. Those are, that's the kind of information uh, over time. I'm not suggesting you have this in 30 days, but that's the kind of information I think over time that would be very useful for you and for us. Well, um, quick comment. Last month, if you remember, we broke out the cases by town. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice if maybe some of the other home care agencies could also do that. But I think if I had to speculate on what you would see, is that our agency does the volume of the North Country. Um, I would say we do the volume of the cases that really need people there that aren't the ones that look appealing from insurance standpoints of who you're going to get definitely get reimbursement and the maximized reimbursement from the disease process. Which ones are the quick ones like the joint? You go in X many times and then you come out and you make money on those. You know, we do have our fair share of those, but we would also have our fair share of the ones that have had the complications that cost maybe a little bit more money. But at the end of the day, our nurses see everybody that is in need. Um, I think from time to time, little situations come up where I've like reached out to Ryan to say, hey, just to kind of make sure we're, you know, our compass is pointed in the right direction or these you know, this is the mission you want us to have, and I feel that our agency is working very hard to serve the needs of the entire county, and I think we're the only one doing that. When we get referrals now from, it doesn't really matter any of the hostels that we get referrals from. One of the things that we've noticed that's very different than history is they'll call, we have a referral, they'll tell you where the patient lives and what their insurance is, because different insurances pay different amounts of reimbursement. You know, and so we're like, well, it's okay. You don't have to. You know, I just want to know, you know, name, address, date of birth, and what services you're looking for. But they push out, oh, and this is the, you know, whether it be a Medicaid or a managed care or whatever. So. All right, Supervisor Conover. Yeah, it'll be my last. But you see what you just said. That's very important information. And I would think that that would be very important information to the state of New York as well in terms of all the. Uh, a lot of times being shaken, mm -hmm. shaking the ass. It's very important to make the public sector uh, because you know, uh, there isn't a, a reasonable dispersion of, uh, of uh, care, uh, in need of care, uh, across all of the providers, and that's an issue. That would be an issue for, for example, in your mm -hmm. Of course it would. Is it also an issue in your world as well? So that's very important information for the city. <coughs> right, thank you, Mr. Conover. We'll move on to the next item now, please. So, um, the emergency response and preparedness report is attached, and so is the rabies. And then jumping down to informational items, um, where I did three meeting requests 
um, forms that were submitted for authorization. One is for Janelle Oxford to attend the Home Care Association's Know the Drill Successful Emergency Planning Preparedness and Compliance Strategies for Home Care and Hospice, and that's offered in Troy in September. Another one is um, authorization for Christy McAvey, our public <coughs> health nurse, to take a certified Oasis D quality specialist bundle. That's offered on an online program for $449, and it's an eight-module program that sells paid. Um, it's something that our certified home health agency definitely needs to be sure that we're getting the reimbursement that we are able to get for our cases. Um, following up with that is also for Christy McGavey to take another course um, that's online through FOSI, which is the online program for 549, and that's another eight-module program. She's planning on kind of doing one than the other. Like I said, it's self-paced, and she's quite energetic about getting it done. Um, moving along, our home care, um, we had one of our nurses that was out on extended leave return this past Friday, so we now only have one out on the leave, with two on intermittent leave. Um, we have three open full-time nursing positions, and we already discussed the intent to fill for the registered professional nurse number 11. Um, just a quick update on the Quality Senior Care Coalition. We had our second meeting in August, and it was hosted by the Glens Falls Center. Um, the skilled nursing facilities are really interested in letting us see their facilities, so they're agreeing and offering to host, so it's nice. We have 23 people currently listed as members. Um, the brochures, which I provided the towns in the packet, and just kind of for a quick um, look, I'll go over those real quick. They've been finalized for distribution. We're recommending that each town helps us distribute these. There's three. One of them is the caregiver's, caregiver's guide to selecting the right resources that goes into all the different modalities as far as helping you pick the right care modality for your loved one. Promoting a healthy relationship between caregivers and skilled nursing homes is another. And one of the other things that came up that actually is uniquely with quality seniors is there's a lot of medication that usually has to get disposed of and there's sharps that typically have to get disposed of. So we came up with a sharps and medication disposal guide um, and the different resources available to help people in the community get rid of those. So there's common questions that come up so we thought we would put this out with the information. We're planning on going to health fairs, we're planning on working with people within the community to get our brochures out there, but we're hoping, especially for the northern towns, to try to get this out in the town halls. And if you need more, there's an uh, information sheet in there on how to get more from Janelle Oxford, where you can see me. Okay. We'll all um, do that. Finally, um, another exciting issue with the passing of P21. Um, we have a vaping and e-cigarette community forum that's going to be taking place September 19th from 6 to 8 at Lake George Elementary School. We had a difficult time trying to find the venue, so it was nice that Lake George stepped up to the plate and we kind of had the panel planned and everything. Um, but there's a attachment 12 is a flyer for that. If you want to post it or need extras, let us know. But if you're interested in attending, we're hoping to get a lot of people there to put out the information. Okay, thank you very much. One quick thing that I'd like to bring up, because I know Mr. Lowe will probably bring it up if I don't, but we are running behind because some of us have a budget meeting following this, so I'd kind of like to wrap this up. Uh, I know you all read about the mental health issue that's at the hospital, and I talked to Rob York briefly this morning, and I know that Ryan talked to him a little bit longer, so I'm just going to have him give us a brief idea of what Rob had to say. I think Rob's probably comfortable in what's happening at this point. Uh, he is. He is. Um, it's, uh, he's confident that we can transition uh, all of the uh, uh, patients over uh, seamlessly, uh, that there won't be uh, interruptions in care. Uh, it's a process that he's working on right now uh, with his staff and with uh, the uh, community. Uh, he does not have details yet as to the plan, but he should have more information for the committee next month. Okay, thank you very much. Does the committee have anything else before we take a motion to adjourn? Anybody in the audience have anything? All right, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor Leggett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, very. Thank you. Very Enjoy the rest of your week. This is uh, uh,